there are many different types of fasting out there and they all have their own lengths. Some say that you should fast only for 16 to 20 hours, whereas others say that you have to fast for 3 to 5 days. How long do you need to fast to get the benefits? Check out this video about the timeline of fasting benefits. Time's up. The human body can survive for quite a long time without eating by burning its own body fat. But during this process, we go through several stages. We transition from the fifth state into the fastest one and it consists of uh, several stages. Number one, post-absorptive stage lasts approximately one to six hours. After eating, you're not going to immediately begin fasting because it takes time to fully digest the nutrients you consumed. The calories and macronutrients are still circulating in the bloodstream. How long it takes to shift from the fed state into the fasted one depends on how many calories was eaten and the amount of carbohydrates. The more carbs and calories you ate, the longer your blood sugar will stay elevated and you stay in the post-absorptive stage where fasting has not occurred. Number two, glycogenolysis stage, one to two days. The body uses its stored glycogen stores primarily from the liver and in small amounts from the muscle. Liver glycogen stores last for 12 to 16 hours and up to 24 hours. It is supposed to balance blood sugar and maintain energy balance. Mobilization of adipose tissue triglycerides increases between 18 to 24 hours of fasting. The body's liver glycogen stores are being depleted and fat begins to substitute for the lack of glucose. Growth hormone increases by 1300 to 2000% at the 24 hour mark. After three days of fasting, growth hormone increases dramatically in non-obese individuals, but flats out after day 10. Number three, gluconeogenesis stage, one to seven days. To cover the demand for glucose, the body creates new glucose from amino acids, fatty acids, and other substrates like lactate. This maintains a higher rate of muscle catabolism and nitrogen excretion. Gluconeogenesis is highest between day 1 to 3, after which it decreases thanks to ketosis and fat oxidation sparing nitrogen. Number 4. Ketosis stage. 3 to 4 days. As liver glycogen stores get depleted and fat oxidation increases, the body begins to progressively shift into ketosis, characterized by the elevation of ketone bodies. Ketones keep increasing until week 2 of starvation, but they plateau after that. Muscles and adipose tissue begin to block glucose uptake, prevent glycolysis and become insulin resistant as to start using fatty acids and ketones for fuel instead of glucose. Fatty acid oxidation also decreases the oxidation of branch chain amino acids like leucine, isoleucine and valine. This spares muscle catabolism and maintains muscle protein. Glucose production by the liver is determined by the brain's demand for glucose. After keto adaptation, the brain can cover 50-75% to of its energy demands with ketone bodies. This provides an additional benefit for reducing gluconeogenesis and thus preserving more muscle tissue. The most drastic changes happen during the initial days where your body is transitioning over into ketosis. And that's where most of the health benefits are coming from as well, by shifting these fuel sources. But one of the most common benefits of fasting that people like to pursue is autophagy. How long is it going to take for you to get into autophagy? Most of the autophagy signaling happens through the pathways of mTOR and AMPK. If your body is fed and nourished, mTOR is elevated together with insulin. And when your energy stores are being depleted, AMPK gets turned on to promote autophagy. Liver glycogen determines the balance between mTOR and AMPK. As liver glycogen gets depleted around 24 hours of fasting, AMPK begins to promote ketosis and begins to progressively increase autophagy as well. So it would take approximately like 24 hours to start seeing some increase in autophagy because that's when your liver glycogen gets depleted. But to see like a fully autophagy process being activated, then you probably would need to fast for maybe like 36, 48 or even up to 72 hours. Disappoint! However, there are ways to speed up this process as well by either increasing the speed of liver glycogen depletion or turning on AMPK through other means. Physical exercise is a prime example of getting the benefits of fasting faster by burning through your glycogen stores and promoting autophagy. Carbohydrate restriction and eating a ketogenic diet will achieve the same result because of consuming fewer carbs. There isn't a lot of research about when does autophagy begin or when does it peak and uh, therefore it's just uh, guessing uh, in terms of uh, when do you actually get it. But at the same time, chances are you will still eventually hit a plateau where you're not going to see more autophagy. And I would think it would be happening around maybe day 5, day 7, something around that where you've been fasting for. With increasing ketosis, ketones can rise from 1 to 2 millimoles at day 3 up to 6 to 10 millimoles by the end of the week. This results in mild metabolic acidosis because of a reduction in serum bicarbonate levels. 
The purpose of this acidosis is to provide a gradient for the blood-brain barrier to cover the brain's energy demands. During metabolic acidosis, calcium and phosphorus are being continually excreted beyond what would be lost during muscle catabolism. As a result, bone mineral is being gradually dissolved. That is why some doctors do not like to use fasting or ketosis in individuals prone to osteoporosis. Thus, fasting for up to a week and seeing your ketones rise above 6 to 10 might not be a good idea, especially for the older population or for someone who has frail bones. In conclusion, here is an easy overview about the timeline of the fasting benefits. 4 to 6 hours after eating, blood sugar levels drop. 10 to 12 hours, liver glycogen is being tapped into. 12 to 14 hours, ketones begin to rise. 18 to 20 hours, fat oxidation increases markedly. 22 to 24 hours, liver glycogen has been depleted. 24 hours, gluconeogenesis rises progressively. 24 to 36 hours, growth hormone spikes exponentially. 36 to 48 hours, autophagy increases. 48 to 72 hours, ketosis and fat oxidation rise exponentially. 3 days, gluconeogenesis peaks and begins to decrease. 3 to 5 days, ketones rise multifold and reduce muscle catabolism. 3 to 5 days, blood sugar drops the lowest. After day 5, growth hormone increase flattens out. 7 days, metabolic acidosis and ketoacidosis increase. So, it appears that most of the benefits of fasting come around around 48 hours or 72 hours of fasting. If you are metabolically flexible, then you can also see these shifts happening faster because your body is healthier and you're able to swap these fuel sources faster. Whereas if you're, let's say, pre-diabetic or you have very high blood sugar, you're obese, then for you it's naturally going to take longer. Disappointed! If you want to start intermittent fasting and optimize it for longevity, body composition and wellness, then check out my Metabolic Atsava Gym Masterclass. But on that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.